Well, good morning and welcome to our worship service here today. I'm Alan Akana, the Kahu or pastor of Koloa Union Church, and I welcome each and every one of you. I know we have some first time visitors here today, and I especially welcome you. And we have a gift bag or a gift packet for our first time visitors with a gift from the church, some information about the church, and a visitor card so you can tell us a little bit about yourself. So if you happen to come in without getting your visitor, packet be sure you grab one on the way out and get your gift and the rest of the good things that are in there for you we do uh, no longer collect an offering and so if you've been especially blessed by our time together today you can leave an offering in the offering bowl here we also have an offering basket right outside our main door Let's see, there's just a couple of brief announcements and then we're gonna get into the celebration of our centennial. Um, I did want people to know, people have been asking about the Parsonage and Art Gallery at the Parsonage and it will be open today right after lunch, probably about two o'clock or so until around five o'clock. So if anybody wants to go over there after lunch, we've got iced tea and I'll put on a pot of coffee and feel free just to come over and visit for a while and look around and check things out. I also wanted to point out that um, we are singing hymns again. We haven't sung hymns uh, in church together since the beginning of the pandemic. And so just know that every other chair has a tan hymnal, which is the Hawaiian hymnal, and a black hymnal, which is the English language hymnal. So if you get those mixed up, you're going to be lost singing along. I also know that some of you don't speak fluent Hawaiian, I'm guessing. So um, when we sing our Hawaiian hymn, and if you're having trouble singing the Hawaiian words. If you'd like to just follow along and read the bulletin insert, these aren't the words that we're going to sing, but it's the translation, and we always want people to know what we're singing about in church, so there's that for you. And uh, we do have some other announcements that I think are really important, but we need to get to the, the big announcement of the day. And today we celebrate our church's centennial, centennial 100 years of being Koloa Union Church, and even though we have had a Christian presence here in this community since 1835, we officially chartered as Koloa Union Church in 1923. And we have had a wonderful centennial committee that's been meeting for at least two and a half years. And at this point, I'm gonna ask Jeannie Odo, our centennial chair, to come up and lead the rest of this announcement. Go ahead and talk. Oh, l l let me let me turn this on here. Oh, this is on. Okay, hold on just a second. Oh, it's, yeah, on it's on now. <laughs> Before I go into my script, I just wanted to say a little bit about. Um, oh, we're so happy today is the last day of our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, you know what I have learned. Um, you're going to find out as as the, the day goes along, you know, how we became the Kalua Union Church and what's been going on the last hundred years. But I'm going to have to let you know that when Aka, uh, uh, our Kahu called me to be chair, I don't know what was in my mind, but I said yes. <laughs> But you know, you when you're in this church, you can learn to agree. You can learn to agree to disagree. And also, you can learn how to say you don't say no when you're asked. <laughs> so a lot of things that happen in the church, they can say, will you do this? You don't say no. You say yes. So here I am. I would like to first invite our Centennial Committee to come to the front to be recognized. Uh, Penny, Jessup, where's Penny? Oh, Penny Jessup and Penny Osuga, and of course our Kahu. And I'm going to have to men mention Joanne. Uh, Joanne, where is Joanne? Okay. Uh, she had started us on this because when we first said we're going to do this, we had a look in the uh, file folders, and she was the one that started us going and never gave up. So we're really grateful. Thank you. 
But now I would like to ask our chair moderator, Dr. Doug Duvichel, and our vice uh, moderator, Joanne, who just came up, and the chair of our Board of Deacons, Michael Horning, to come to the front, please. Okay, Doug is carrying our uh, mayor's proclamation, and Michael and Jan will uh, do the lays. They just did the oh, they just did. Okay. <laughs> okay, Doug. <laughs> nope, not me. Genie. <laughs> oh. okay. Yes, on the behalf of the congregation of Chloe Union Church, we present the Centennial, we are represent the Centennial Committee with their lay as tokens of our appreciation for all your hard work you've done and continue to do for our church. The committee has been working together for approximately two and a half years to plan this Centennial Year celebration. So let us thank them all with an applause. Now I want to present the mayor's proclamation to you, and I think it's important that we actually read through the whole thing. So it says, it says the Office of the Mayor Proclamation, Colorado Union Church Centennial Celebration. Whereas for the past 100 years, we celebrate and honor the people and history of Colorado Union Church. And whereas since establishing the first congregation in 1835, the Christian witness in Colorado has been strong. From its earliest days, the mission station provided worship services, Sunday school, and prayers for the spiritual well-being among early Hawaiians. And whereas, the mission also provided medical doctors and facilities to attend to the physical health of the residents of both Kauai and Ni'ihau. As Koloa Plantation grew alongside the church and brought workers from different parts of the world, Koloa Union Church provided worship services for people in their own languages as well as health care for them, for them all. And whereas, when three separate bodies from within the church identified by the languages of their mother countries established Koloa Union Church on October, October 21st, 1923. The physician, Dr. A. H. Waterhouse, was a charter member and one of the first deacons. The Waterhouse family and church members were providers and advocates for both health care and affordable housing for local residents and former plantation workers. Whereas the church also was also recognized at the Grand Marshal for the 2023 Cloa Plantation Days Parade, celebrating its long history in the Protestant congregational Christian tradition dating back to the founding of the first church in Koloa in 1835, consisting mainly of indigenous Hawaiian people. And whereas the church added members from diverse cultural backgrounds, including Japanese, Filipino, and American, and was chartered as Koloa Union Church on October 21st, 1923, the church is an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ where all are welcome to worship and serve God in a supportive community of faith. Part of its mission statement is to nurture all with God's unconditional love and reach out into the broader community by sharing aloha with everyone. Now, therefore, I, Derek S.K. Kawakami, Mayor of the County of Kauai, do hereby celebrate the Koloa Union Church Centennial Celebration and recognize the church for its continued care for both the spiritual and physical needs of the people in our community and throughout the world, and signed by Mayor Kawakami. I also want to mention that our centennial was also recognized by the Hawaii Conference of the United Church of Christ in June at the annual gathering of the conference.
Do you take anything else? That's good. So we now present, we and, present and, to and, the and congregation a proclamation wait. of the mayor that was just read. Yep. Okay. There we go. Right All right. There. Thank you, Doug, and also Michael and Joanne. Most of you know that Koloa Union Church was the Grand Marshal in yesterday's Koloa Plantation Days Parade, an honor that was bestowed on us in part because of our centennial, but also because of our involvement in the community. Speaking of the parade, wasn't it, wasn't our float amazing? It was designed and built by Michael Horning, obviously a man of great talents. Michael, do you want to show your face again? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Michael, for making our awesome float. And we're going to find a place for that because we cannot get rid of that because if you look in the back, it's just beautiful and we need to keep that forever, another hundred years. <laughs> I want to especially remember Phyllis Kunimura, who was the chair of our Board of Deacons when she passed away in 2017 and also the founder of Koloa Union Days. Phyllis always made sure that our church was informed of all of the events and involved in the parade every year. She would be so proud to know that her beloved church was the Grand Marshal this year, and I feel her presence with us this morning. I also want to thank Reverend John Lunn for being here for today's celebration. John, would you like to stand up and show your face, too? <laughs> <laughs> John flew over from Molokai to be with us during our centennial. And those of you who are at the parade or who were at the parade yesterday know that Kahunangi Hill and her husband Jerry were also with us for part of the celebration, but they had commitments at their home church this morning. And I need to share one other thing. When Nani um, was there, we were talking, and Penny Osuga said, I learned everything from Nani. And she learned, and just like the, all of us, we really learned to love this church with our faith, our hope, and our love. Finally, I would like to mention my two cousins, Josephine Duvachel, who's sitting over there. <laughs> <laughs> Wave and to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> And Mamie Paulson, and Mamie, wave. <laughs> <laughs> Who came from Ohio to be here. And Joe was born in 1927, just four years after our church chartered in 1923. I believe she is the person attending today who has been a member of the church the longest. She has been attending our church for almost the entire century that we have been in existence. And Mamie is just a few years behind her sister Jo, but is likely the only person here today who began attending our church during the first decade of, our, of its existence, who also came all the way from the mainland to celebrate with us today. Mamie is here with her daughter, Lisa. Lisa, you can wave to Lisa. <laughs> who made sure her mom got here <laughs> safe and sound. I'm now going to ask Kahu to walk us through the rest of the morning and is going to look like and what the morning is to look like for the rest of the day, for the rest of the day. So we can take our seats now. Okay, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause again. <laughs> Jeannie Odo did a wonderful job as our chair. And by the way, you can always say no to me if you really want to. I can't tell you what the consequences will be, but you can always say no to me. Um, and thank you so much. This committee has been so fun to work with and so dedicated to uncovering some history and figuring out the best ways to celebrate this week and the entire year. So even though today is going to come to a close in a little bit, uh, we're going to continue celebrating the whole year, our centennial. And thank you to the congregation. 
it's because of you that we have a centennial and for all the people that have been a part of this church and your families for so very long. I'm, I, uh, Jeannie just wanted me to share with you what's happening right after church, just so everyone's got a picture of the, the plans for the day. As soon as the benediction is over and we start making our way out the door, uh, we have a special guest, Dennis Fujimoto, the photographer from the Garden Island newspaper. He's going to be taking a picture of every single one of us, and we would love to have everybody in the picture. Um, we're going to start right after church bringing some chairs out and setting them up for the kupuna and anybody else that would find it more easy to sit rather than stand. And so we're going to ask them to be in the front, and then all the kids and people who are still able to kneel, I'll see how I'm doing at the moment, but we will kneel down in front of the kupuna, and then anybody else can stand behind. And we really want to see everybody's face. Now, I've told Dennis, I've prayed that there it will not be raining right after the church, so we don't need to worry about the weather. However, once I told him once in a while, one of my prayers is not answered. And so if, if by that chance that happens to uh, happen today, then Dennis will kind of decide for us how we're going to be or where we're going to be and all that. So just know that right after church, photograph. As soon as we've get the, got the photograph done, we're going to celebrate in Moore Hall and out here with a luncheon, uh, the patio area. And so we do have a catered luncheon from Kauai Poke at Poipu Bay. And so um, we're going to ask you to grab your lunch and have a seat. And as soon as everyone's been through the lunch line, we're going to start a slideshow that we've been working on for about two and a half years of the church's history. And from that slideshow, we're actually making a booklet of photographs and the story story of our church. We decided not to have that ready today, partly because there's there's a, a bit more to do, but also we wanted to get some pictures from today, like the big gr group uh, photograph, and some pictures from the parade in the booklet. And so we're planning on having that ready about October or so. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. Um, as soon as we start the slideshow, everyone in Moore Hall that's in there at the time can see it, and it's set to loop over and over again. So once it starts, you can go and watch the slideshow at any time and you can see all the pictures so you don't have to be there when it starts and then as soon as lunch is over we have dessert some beautiful cakes we've had made for the centennial and also gift bags so if you're here everyone gets a gift bag uh, from the church as well and I believe that's it um, Oh, I, I did also want to mention that in Moore Hall, we have some old photographs that we've put back up on the wall. And then on the far end of Moore Hall, we have a bunch of smaller photographs from the last hundred years or so. So when you go in there, be sure to look around and take a look at all the photographs in there. And now may the celebration begin. Come, let us offer praise and thanksgiving to God. Let us praise the Lord forever. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Those who have come before us have passed down their wisdom, showing us the ways of God through acts of faith and courage and compassion. We will pass down new wisdom to future generations so that others, for years to come, will remember the things that God has done among us. They, in turn, will pro proclaim the works of God to the generations that come after them. And many years from now, people will be grateful for our faith, for our courage, for our acts of compassion. People forever shall celebrate God's abundant goodness, and they shall sing songs of God's righteousness. We are an important link in the great chain of people who are loved by God and who love God in return. And now let us stand as we sing the opening hymn from the black hymnal, not the tad one, but the black one, uh, hymn 395, In Christ There Is No East or West. And just make sure you're uh, reading the notes on 395, not 394, because it's the same song. All righty.
Epulikako, let us pray. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you, thank you for your love that birthed the vision of this congregation. Inspire our witness to you that all may know the power of your forgiveness and the hope we find in Christ's resurrection. Send down upon Koloa Union Church and Kahu Akana the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may truly please you. Pour upon them the continual dew, dew of your blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the song in Hula we wanted to present to you is uh, called Kapilina. It's by Frank uh, Hewitt Akumuhula. And it's about the birds in, 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 on our islands, especially in Koke. You have the Elapayo, the Apapane, and the uh, Iivi. The reason we wanted to present this song is because, the, um, you know, as you know, the, our birds are near extinction. Um, they're called, I think, honey creepers, and I think there's about 17 of the 50 species left. And some of them, I think they only counted a few more birds, and it's under attack by the mosquito population. I just want us to remember, like the birds, all those that came before that brought us to this day today, celebrating our 100th birthday, and including those here today. But they, they have some that have been passed, and some we will never see again. But this is about the beautiful birds, and I hope you can see the birds in the hula. Thank you. 
Aloha. Today's gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35, and 44 to 48. Listen for the word of God. Jesus put before them another parable. In the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it gr has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that birds of the air come and make nests on it. He told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it with three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. There was fulfilled what was, had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim which has been hidden since the foundation. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and returned and reburied. Then in his joy he goes and sells all his possessions and buys that field. Again, the, heaven of, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. He finds one pearl of great value. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, put the good in baskets, and threw out the bad. May God bless the reading of the word, and may our hearts be open to receiving it. Centennial Committee started meeting about two and a half years ago, I decided I was going to read up on all the history of the church that I could find, and the committee was a great help digging stuff out of old files and looking for books and all sorts of things to help us all kind of figure out who we have been over the last hundred years. And of course, we reminded ourselves rather quickly that our history goes all the way back to 1835, and actually the year before that. I absolutely loved hearing from the other committee members and also doing research myself. And one of the things that I found was that so much of what I read was about all the cultures coming together in this place. And also the, the sense that I got as I read about it is we've always had this feeling of being ohana, of family. 
And so when the Koloa Plantation Days Committee asked us, our church, if we would be willing to be the Grand Marshal, and then they told us that the theme is uniting cultures as one ohana, I thought, that's perfect for us. It really describes who we are as a church. So in 1834, the Reverend Peter Gulick and his wife Fanny and their small five sons were out in Waimea and they were told it's time to start thinking about a second mission station on the island of Kauai and Koloa was chosen basically about the same time as Hanalei. But anyway, Peter Gulick came here with his young family and lived in an old fashioned Hawaiian Pili house made out of um, just natural material and the roof was made out of uh, grasses and so on. And this is a family that moved from New England to Hawaii. So this was pretty rustic for them to come here back in 1834. Well, the very next year, they established an official church right here in Koloa. And eventually, very soon after that, they were given property from kind of the far end of or where Moore Hall is over here, all the way to where the current uh, elementary school and library are in Koloa. So this was all one church property back in the day. And then across the street was the mission property from the corner where the Texaco station is, all the way down to Waikoma Road, all the way over to Wele Wele Road. That was all for the missionaries to support their ministry here. And then very soon after that, we had um, a medical missionary here. And Koloa actually became known not only as the, the second mission station or the second church on the island, but we here were the center of health care for the entire island of Kauai and Ni'ihau. So if you wanted to see a Western trained doctor, you either had to come here to see Dr. LaFon at first and then Dr. Smith, who came after Dr. LaFon was here for a few years. This is where you came, or if you couldn't make it, one of those doctors would actually get on a horse or on a boat and go visit you in case of an emergency. Well, back when the church was started, this was pretty much all Hawaiian people that lived here. There weren't a whole lot of other people in the area, so the church started out as the indigenous Hawaiian people and the handful of missionaries that were here. However, Koloa Landing right down the road was the main port for the island. This was long before there was boats coming into Lihue all the time, when people wanted to drop something off for anybody between Waimea and Lihue and beyond, typically they would come right down the road, drop stuff off, and then someone would have to come pick it up from wherever they were on the island or someone would deliver it to them. So Koloa was kind of the center of health care and commerce back in the day. Well, we also know in 1835, the year that Koloa plant Plantation got started, um, we had this church founded and as people came to work on the plantations from all different parts of the world, from China and Japan and Puerto Rico and Portugal and Mexico and the Philippines, people started bringing their faith with them. And so there were Christians that moved from other places here. And they, if they were Protestant, they wanted to worship in a Protestant setting. And then there was many people that came from other churches who converted once they came here, converted to Christianity. And so this church, this space from basically Moore Hall over to uh, the elementary school, this was one big church. But eventually there were four different languages uh, or four different worship services that were done in the different languages so everybody could understand what was going on in their own language. Well, as you can imagine, over time, if you're going to school and sending your kids to school with people that speak one language, primarily English, and you're playing all together and speaking the same language, and eventually people were growing up here and working together, speaking the same language. By the time the 1920s came around, there were most people living here thinking, we 
and worshiping here in this space, saying things like, you know, we all speak the same language now, even though we come from different cultural backgrounds. And you know what? The way we worship is so similar. We don't really worship all that differently. Our order of worship's the same. It's just in these different languages. Our theology is relatively the same. The things we believe about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and church. And so most of the people that were gathering together in this space in their four services said, you know what, why don't we just join together and be one big happy family? Ohana. Well, most of the people wanted that. And so in 1923, the English-speaking church, the Japanese-speaking church, and the Filipino-speaking church all voted to unite. And the Hawaiian-speaking church decided, we're not quite sure about this. We want some time to think about it. And so that year, Koloa Union Church was established. And so from that point on, there were two churches on this one shared property together. And then over time, uh, it became apparent that um, the two churches started worshiping differently and having different theology, and the language was the one thing they had in common, but to this day, we have two different churches, and we do our best to love each other and get along, but Koloa Union Church really came about with three of those four churches coming together, and again, as I read about our history, I think, all these different cultures, and the ones that I mentioned, those, those three languages, um, there were people from all over the world that started coming here because for many years, Koloa was the main port. It was still the main place in the island for healthcare. The other thing I realized is that most of the children on the South Shore all came here to be educated, and the missionaries from Hanalei all the way past Lihue, if you have if you had kids that you wanted educated on this island, you sent them to Koloa, to the school that the missionaries ran right here. And so the missionaries on this entire island felt very much like Ohana and all the people that gathered here for worship. Many cultures, one Ohana. Those of you that have been uh, worshiping with us all summer know that we've been looking at the Gospel of Matthew and the parables of Jesus that are in the Gospel of Matthew. And one of the things that I have discovered after reading those parables many, many times is these parables are so much about Ohana, the values of Ohana, and, and how people treat each other, and that was truly reflected in all the reading that I've done about our church's history. Today, there are five very short parables that Kay read for us in Matthew, and I just want to look at one of those, the, the one that I would say is probably the most well-known of all of them, the parable of the mustard seed. But before I get into that, I just want to tell you that one thing I started doing just this year is when I see the kingdom of heaven, th those words in the Gospel of Matthew, I started substituting the family of God or the Ohana of God. And I'm not telling you that we, I, I'm trying to change the words of the New Testament, but it's really important to me that when you look at what was written over 2,000 years ago, that we do our best to understand what those words meant back then, and then to think about words and phrases and images that we relate to today that will help us understand in today's culture, in today's setting, what must have been meant back then. So hear the words of the first parable by just switching those three words. The family of God is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Something that starts out so tiny. If I held up a mustard seed up here right now, you wouldn't be able to see it, except maybe a few people in the front row that have better vision than me. It's a tiny little thing, and it just grows into something enormous. And that's the idea of the parable of the mustard seed. 
This tiny little thing just grows and grows and grows beyond our control and beyond our wildest imaginations. Now, I've preached on this particular parable before, so this might be a little repeat for people that have been here, but I want you to know that a mustard seed grows into a shrub. And I've seen plenty of mustard in different parts of the world that's growing, and it's kind of a scrawny shrub, and it's usually about this high. A giant one, to me, would be maybe this high. Mustard seeds in nature don't grow into trees, really. I, I've never seen a mustard tree, and there certainly aren't any where Jesus was when he was preaching this, or when he was teaching this parable. So the idea here is the family of God, the people of God grow so big, it's beyond your wildest imaginations, bigger than you can even fathom. And like a family, when it grows, you welcome that growth, don't you? When a new baby comes along, you welcome that baby, whether that baby looks more like the mom or the dad or one of the grandparents. You welcome that baby, whether it's a fat baby or a relatively skinny baby. You welcome that baby, no matter what color skin that baby, if it looks more like the mom or the dad or some distant relative, that baby is welcome by the family. And then as the family grows, as that baby grows up to an adult and has a partner or a spouse of his or her own and starts having children of their own, you welcome their children. No matter what they look like or who they look more like. And that's why it helps me to say the family of God is like a mustard seed as opposed to the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Because I'll tell you, in my experience, in my studies, and in my listening to the news, kingdoms and empires and nations don't really act like that all the time, do they? Well, we don't want people that look like that to come into our country. Or those people don't look very much like us, or they're from other places. We don't want to grow in that way. So to really understand this, we have to ask ourselves what Matthew was getting at, the big picture, and I've said before that Matthew was really clear about what life was like for the people that Jesus was talking to during the days of the Roman occupation, when the emperor really didn't care about anybody unless that person enriched the emperor and his family and his extended family, enriched his power, enriched his sense of security. You really didn't matter as a person, unless in some way you help the emperor in the ways that the emperor wanted help. And then after Matthew, and you can read, read through the Gospel of Matthew, and you'll just see this pattern over and over. Matthew makes it really clear that Jesus condemned that and then offered an alternative, which basically said, you matter and you matter. Every single person matters, no matter what you look like, no matter where you're from, it's like family. And so, as I think about our church's history, and going back to 100 years and even back to 1835, I think that's really what we have tried our best to be all this time, to treat people like they matter because they do, because we all matter to God. And anybody that walks through this door or onto this property, we want them to know that they're welcome here and that God's love is for them. I remember when I was in my early 20s, I went to my first family reunion in uh, Hawaii. It was at Magic Island at the Ala Moana Park on Oahu, just kind of in that really busy area where a lot of local people go. And, you know, I grew up in California and had met most of my cousins once, maybe twice. A few of them I might have seen more than that. But, you know, I've got this big extended family. 
And when I heard that there was going to be a family reunion, it was going to be all the descendants of Wong Sing and Ka'ilianu Akana, which were my dad's Chinese grandfather and Hawaiian grandmother who raised him. These were his Hanai parents. I thought, I don't care what it takes. I need to get there and, and, and meet some of these people that I've been hearing about my whole life. And so I hopped on a plane and flew to Honolulu from Southern California, where I was um, going to school in seminary at the time. And I got to Magic Island, found the big banner, Akana Ohana, and I saw about 200 people there. If it wasn't for the banner, I wouldn't have known that I was in the right place. I recognized finally about 10 of those people, my sister, my mom, my dad, and a few others that I was close to. But all these other people I had never seen before, maybe two cousins. I mean, it was just a little tiny drop in the bucket that I knew. But it was really cool for me to say, I'm related to all these people somehow. Now, I want you to know that my dad was a very quiet person. He was kind of like that typical Asian man that didn't say a whole lot unless he was like with the other, you know, his buddies at the bar or at the, um, you know, just cousins or so on. You know, my dad rarely spoke um, in public. I mean, I mean, not public speaking, but anytime there was a crowd, you, it was rare to hear my dad's voice. And even when the family was together, he didn't do a lot of the talking. I have to tell you that the first family reunion I went to when, when dad was there, I was blown away. He talked incessantly. He knew almost everybody there. These were the cousins he grew up with, his brothers, his cousins, his sisters, his aunts and uncles. And I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm connected to all these people. And I still today get chicken skin when I think about going to that reunion and meeting all these people for the first time. And there were so many different kinds. There, were, of course, was Chinese and Hawaiian because that was, you know, my dad's grandparents. And it was, you know, from that, uh, from them on down in terms of all the, the branches of the family tree. But I looked around and I thought, there's everything here. There's Filipino. There's Japanese, there's Puerto Rican, there's th th African American, Caucasian, just everything you could imagine. And everybody was there just to celebrate that we were family. Well, I get that same chicken skin when I think about our church, because as I've been doing all this reading over the last two and a half years, I think we are that kind of family in terms of its diversity. We come from so many different backgrounds. And I don't mean just our parents or grandparents or great grandparents. Many of us have different backgrounds, but we come together as an ohana. We come together as family. And what holds us together is our knowledge and awareness of God's love, not only for us, but for all people, and our commitment to sharing that love with others. And so I'm going to wrap this up. I told the Centennial Committee my message is going to be a little bit shorter today. And I didn't think anybody would mind. But anyway, I just wanted you to say, I, I just wanted you to know that I still get chicken skin when I think of all of you and how we come from so many different places and backgrounds. And yet it's God's love that holds us together. And above everything that we celebrate for our Centennial, this is the thing that I celebrate the most. It's our connection, our oh, being Ohana because of God's love. Amen. Okay, the next song is Kiakua Manae. And at the end, we threw in a, a set of lines from I will always love you, you know, the Whitney Houston thing, but, but if you change the words, and we know that, that God is basically singing to God, that we know he'll treat us kind, and that we'll always love him. Kau ilang kahit 
Thank you so much, Rose Tatiana and Doug, for that beautiful hula and melee. We're so blessed by both of you. And now it's time for the sharing of joys and concerns. And if we have any prayer cards, this is the time to bring those up. And I'll also point out on page seven, we have all of the prayers that people have turned in, both the joys and concerns. And I'm going to start out with the joys. Happy birthday to Kay Osuga. So Kay, happy birthday this week. He's he's shy, and so he's walking away right now. But anyway, Kay, Kay, Kay is turning uh, 70 or 80 or something like that. <laughs> so happy birthday, Kay. And then also prayers for Suzanne. She went uh, into the hospital again last night. Um, and uh, I think she is home resting, but uh, that's Suzanne Pearson, so prayers for her. And then um, uh, wish uh, from your church friends, wishing Debbie and Bonnie a super happy birthday this coming week as well. And uh, another somebody wishing them a happy birthday. Lots of birthdays this week, wonderful. A lot of celebrating going on. And then uh, Penny says, Kay and I are... Um, Happy, so happy having 24 family members here for KUC Centennial Celebration and Kay's birthday next week. So I, I'm wondering, is that a joy or a prayer? <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, it's both. <laughs> no, I, I think I've met most of them, and I would definitely say that's a joy. And then Rosemary um, asks, uh, says prayers for encouraging results for a pancreas biopsy for sister-in-law Val Lau. She's been at Straub Hospital for almost a week. And then um, I would just mention, um, 
Our lay reader today was one of, supposed to be one of our youth, Sydney Eno, and uh, she came down with a cold with a bit of a fever, so wisely stayed home. And so I just uh, wanted to, to add her. Uh, it's nothing serious, I don't think, but you know, when you're just not feeling well, you always appreciate those prayers. Um, and then also just wanted to, to thank Rory Jim for being our uh, lay reader for the call to worship at the very last minute. So thank you so much, Rory, for stepping in, and also Kay for reading the scripture today. So um, let me uh, just allow us to take a moment uh, of silent prayer together and just lift up any joys you have silently, say any prayers, and after just a moment, I'll lead us in a verbal prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day in which we celebrate the centennial of our church, we give you thanks for its rich history and especially for all the people that have gone before us to make this church what it is today, for all the people that are here today who continue to make this a place of openness and welcome and love for all people. And we thank you for the children and youth of our church who will lead this church into the future in their own way. We thank you, O oh God, that uh, all along the way, people have been able and have trusted you and have trusted the next generation as well. God, we thank you for the wonderful celebration this morning that will continue with luncheon today and also the fantastic parade that we had yesterday. The fact that we got to be the grand marshal for our centennial and all the, the love and uh, effort that went into that. We thank you also for birthdays and anniversaries and family reunions that continue to take place over the summer. We give you thanks for all of that and for all that we celebrate and, and give and have joy over. And God, we also know that there are those among us, those we love who are ill and injured. We pray for Val and for Suzanne and for Sydney. May they all get better quickly. We pray for their health and their comfort. And for all who are not feeling well. God, as we think about this world that we live in and we think about the injustices and political upheavals and wars and violence throughout the world, we give you thanks for this church and your church and all places who are committed to peacemaking peace building, and simply being people of peace. And so we pray for all those places, oh God, where people are struggling just to survive and to be who they are and be together as families. We thank you, God, for those who are among us that, um, that are part of this community that couldn't be here today, those that are in hospice care, those whose health is just not well enough to allow them to leave home anymore or the hospital or the care facilities. And we pray, oh God, that whatever it is that you have in store for them, that they would just be flooded by your peace and your love as well. We lift all these prayers to you, both the prayers of joy and the prayers of concern. And Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray by saying together, our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to take the Hawaiian hymnal, which is the tan one, and uh, turn to page 135 for our closing hymn, Hawaii Aloha. And again, the insert has the translation into English if you'd like to follow along. Let us stand together as we sing the closing hymn. <laughs>
Um, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to say grace uh, as a part of the benediction so that when you go in to pick up your food um, after the photograph, uh, you can start eating whenever you like. So you don't need to wait for grace because I'm going to take care of that in here. And then also for those of you that are new, the words to um, the Queen's Prayer are not only written in your bulletin, but also behind me here. And those that you can see behind the orchids over here, they're, they've, we've decided to keep those up. And just so you can um, read along if you'd like to um, sing uh, the song with with us if you don't know it already. And so now let us pray and receive the benediction. Oh God, as we come before you giving thanks for these last 100 years of our church's charter, we offer our thanks to you for not only celebrating in word and in dance and in spirit, but also for the food we are about to receive. And we ask, oh God, that you bless the food to our bodies and the conversation to our souls as we gather together after the worship service to just be together as your people and celebrate our centennial. And now may the love of God, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the comfort and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and with all people now and forever. Amen. of God be with you. And let us share God's peace with one another as we make it outside for the photograph.